cry as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. You see, persecution comes to those who wish to sow the seed and preach the gospel. Some will fall away because of this persecution. If you read Matthew chapter 13, 20, 21, it talks about the falling of the way. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 129. Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. For unto us it is given on behalf of Christ not only to believe on him but also to suffer for his sake. So don't be discouraged, stand fast. If you turn to 1 Thessalonians 3.3. 3, it says that no man should be moved by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we are appointed therein. Do not be put off by it. 2 Corinthians chapter 4.16. Two Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 for which cause we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is being renewed by day for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that God will be with us in our suffering that God will be with us and comfort us in John 15 verse 2 John 15 verse 2 Every branch of me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth that it may bring forth more fruit <clears throat> that God will use your suffering to help you grow as a Christian he will use it to build you up and strengthen you if you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 Verse 3 and 5. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in tr any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. God will comfort you in your tribulation so that you can be a comfort to other people. Bishop J.C. Ryle says, trial to speak plainly is the instrument by which our faith in heaven makes Christians more holy. God uses trials and persecution to make us into better people. The responsibilities of being a minister is, and a preacher is to remember like we've already said to focus on Christ to realize it's about intimacy to realize there is persecution in the ministry but then realize what your main calling is your main calling is to preach you're there to preach the Word of God first of all we preach with our life Let's turn to Ephesians 5, 25, 33. Ephesians 5, 23, 33. Ephesians uh, 5, 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave him sanctify and cleanse it with washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself of glorious church, etc. As, as pastors, 
we and preachers we preach by the way we live how do we treat our kids how do we treat our wives how do we treat our families and there is grace for those who have failed but we preach by how we treat those around us if you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 1 Corinthians 13 though I speak with the tongues of man and of angels and have not charity I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal and though I have the gift of prophecy all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity I'm nothing though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity it profited me nothing Char charity suffereth long and is kind charity envy if not charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up does not behave itself unseemly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked thinketh no evil rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoice in the truth beareth all things believeth all things hopeth all things endureth all things charity never faileth but where there is prophecies they shall fail where there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away when I was a ch child as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face now I know in part but then shall I know even as I am known and now abide of faith hope and charity these, these three these three but the greatest of these is charity or love and we need to have that heart of God in our ministry of God's love 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 and 12 beloved let us love one another for God is of for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love in this was manifest the love of God towards us because that God sent his might live through him here in his love not that we love God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins beloved is if God so loved us we ought also to love one another no man have seen God at any time if we love one another God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected in us so first of all we preach with our lives but then we preach the gospel in John 15 27 John 15 27 And you also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. The disciples were to bear witness to uh, of Christ, were to show forth Christ. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 to 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 to 24. One Corinthians chapter one, verse eighteen to twenty-four says, "For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolishness the wisdom of the world?" For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Greeks' foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jew and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. 
Paul was to preach the gospel, he was to preach Christ, he was to preach a crucified Christ, he was to preach the gospel. If you turn to Galatians uh, chapter 1 verse 6 and 9. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 and 9 says I marvel that you are not you are so soon removed from him that called you into an so, so removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed we said before so say it any other gospel unto you than that you have received let him be accursed Paul preached the gospel he never compromised on it but he preached it too often today people are compromising as ministers on preaching the gospel they will not preach the whole counsel of God in the gospel they will not preach about the wrath of God on sin they will not preach the holiness of God they will not preach the need to repent and turn away from sin. They will not preach on the cross. They want to get into clever apologetics or they want to talk about psychology and, and all the rest of it. But they put in things and don't preach the cross of Christ. They'll even not even preach. They'll put on drama or they'll put on films or they'll, they'll put on worship and all the rest of it. But very few ministers these days will actually preach the gospel. Will get up and give a 35 minute 40 the crucifixion of Christ and say come to believe in Christ it is the only way to be saved and so we're compromising on the gospel if you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 to 20 and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us, what? The word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ had be reconciled to God. Did you get that? is a minister an ambassador of God now if an ambassador is sent on a mission the ambassador has to take the message of the leadership of the city of the leadership of the of the nation the ambassador cannot change the message so often today we forget as ministers that we're ambassadors of God and we dare not change the message it's his message but so often today ministers dare tamper with the message they try to dumb the message down they try to make a new message that is not the Christian message of the gospel and so they are failing and causing shipwreck within their own faith and the faith of many because they will not preach the crucifixion of Christ they will not be ambassadors of God and plainly declare what God has said so we need to our life we need to preach the gospel clearly and uncompromisingly but we need to preach in the power of the Holy Spirit we cannot do this without his aid if you turn to John 15 26 turn to John 15 26 but when the comfort, Comforter is come, whom I send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. This work that we do as ministers, this work that we do as preachers, or whatever ministry that we have, this work is done in the aid and power of the Holy Spirit. It is God's work and God equips for us to do this work. And the equipment is the Holy Spirit. If we turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4. 